In Westminster Abbey, faces from a bygone political age, remembering former Lib Dem leader Paddy Ashdown. The speaker attended too. The calm solemnity here, a world away from scenes early this morning in the House of Commons. <laughs> Labour MPs protesting around the speaker's chair. They've been asked to attend the ceremony in the Lords that marks the five-week suspension of Parliament by the government. The speaker said he agreed with those protesting. I will play my part. This is not, however, a normal prorogation. It is not typical. It is not standard. It's one of the longest for decades. And it represents, not just in the minds of many colleagues, but huge numbers of people outside, an act of executive fiat. The Speaker went to the Lord's ceremony heckled by Tory MPs. Do your job, for which you're handsomely paid. The Prime Minister had shot his prorogation of Parliament. We do, in Her Majesty's name and in obedience to Her Majesty's commands, prorogue this Parliament to Monday the 14th day of October. SNP MPs stayed back in the Commons, singing songs to celebrate their victory, pushing back an election to late November at the earliest. Some Labour MPs sang the red flag. Hardly any Tories hung around to welcome the Speaker back. Our divided politics on stark display. And this stuff about it being anti-democratic, I mean, donnez-moi un break. Uh, what a load of nonsense. We, we were very, very clear that if people wanted a democratic a uh, moment, if they wanted an election, we offered it to the Labour opposition and mysteriously they decided not to go for it. The Prime Minister went ahead with election campaigning, promoting schools policies, even though he hasn't got the election he'd hoped would have started already. And who can give us some information about William Duke of Normandy? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, he conquered England. Yes, but what was his? Why did he think that he should? He had a. How did he have a claim to the throne of England? When Harold was sailing to Nor to Normandy, um. Got, do you remember? What did he, he swear? We'll just move he, on. What did he, he what did swore he an oath, oath of loyalty to help William Duke of Normandy claim the throne of England. Exactly. Well done. Oh, and then he ratted on the on the. But what yeah. would the voters have answered if this was full-scale general election campaigning right now? The company Focal Data polled 19,000 voters and piled in extra data and constituency profiles to predict what would happen in an election result today, seat by seat. Compared to the share of the vote in the last general election, this poll suggests the Tories and Labour are both down more than 10 points, the Lib Dems doubling their standing and the Brexit Party doing much better than UKIP managed. What does this mean in terms of seats? Adding in Scotland, this was the last general election result, and the focal data analysis suggests a vote right now would produce another hung parliament, with Labour down on seats and the Tories making no real advance. At the heart of the whole Tory election strategy is to make inroads into Labour areas uh, in the Midlands, uh, seats like Ashfield in the north. Your analysis suggests the Tories are doing that, but not enough to negate the fact that they're losing seats in Scotland, Aberdeen, for instance, to the SNP, and to the Lib Dems down here in England, places like Lewis. Yes, I mean, the Tory strategy relies on sort of realigning their base away from traditional heartlands up to traditional Labour heartlands that supported leave. Uh, this is a bold strategy and it's, to be honest, probably the only winning strategy they have. But they're not currently taking enough uh, voters with them. But it's very, very close. But right now, the Tories are more or less, when you net out the gains and the losses, they're just standing still. Currently they are standing still. but. In the case of a campaign, it's so finely balanced that the campaigns are really going to make a difference. Some Tories think the Conservatives must start their campaign with a full-blown pact with the Brexit party, something Number 10 is holding back from. 
The only way they're going to vote and support us, those voters are going to support us if we haven't done Brexit, frankly, is if the Brexit party says you should vote for your Conservative candidate in this seat. I don't see any other way. I'm still waiting for someone else to explain to me how, how it will work. I just don't see us squeezing their vote down without actually doing the deed. In your analysis, Labour are picking up some pro-Leave seats that are coming through the middle because the Brexit party is hurting the Tories, places like Thurrock on the Middlesbrough seats. But they're losing some of the pro-Remain seats they got last time, Kensington, to take an example, uh, Warwick and Leamington. They're rolling backwards. Labour aren't doing well at all. And I would agree with you. They are rolling backwards at the moment and they're unable to hold on to a large portion of vo voters they took up in 2017. And it looks like the Lib Dems coming back are taking a lot of Remain supporting voters. Labour are going to have to do something, you know, I think a bit more drastic than they've been doing at the moment if they are going to... You know, they want to be the biggest party, they want to have a majority. They are absolutely miles away from doing that at the moment. Um, no, it, it doesn't really shock me from being out there in the public. Um, I, I think that I have long felt that there is a risk that we have a general election for essentially the numbers not to change dramatically enough to benefit anybody. The Prime Minister's aide, Dominic Cummings, has told allies he believes the Tories can squeeze back the Brexit party vote. Our analysis suggests if they got them down to 7%, the Tories might get a 100 majority. If pro-Remain tactical voters swung behind Labour or the Lib Dems, depending on where they stood a chance of winning, that could give Labour a thumping majority. The DUP have just been in to see the Prime Minister. Some of them are privately worried. Number 10, boxed in by opposition manoeuvres and by the law, could be exploring a Brexit deal that leaves Northern Ireland alone following EU rules, not the rest of the UK. The EU's incoming trade commissioner tonight said he thought there were signs of movement on both sides over Brexit. There are doubts in Brussels whether this parliament or the next one will sign off on a deal. Gary Gibbon reporting with me now to discuss that. Polling is senior Conservative MP and former Chief Whip Andrew Mitchell. Andrew Mitchell, it doesn't seem to suggest that it will be any different from the situation now. In other words, a hung parliament. Well, good evening. I think that this will be an election when finally the Labour Party agree to it which it's absolutely impossible to read at the moment. But if uh, Boris Johnson sticks to his guns, if we leave by October the 31st, I hope with a deal following the European summit, then I think the prospects for the Conservative Party, uh, particularly armed with a good One Nation Queen speech, are very good. Well, the strategy seems to be to concentrate on those leave voting, voting seats in the Midlands and Scotland in, and, and in Northern, Northern England. Yes, I, I rather agree with what Dominic Cummings said to the journalists outside his house. I mean, I think there's a very, very different feeling outside of the M25 beltway, outside of metropolitan London, where people who voted leave feel they've been cheated and there's been three years of argy-bargy. They want to leave. So I, I do think you get a rather different view. I find it in the West Midlands particularly as well, where there are some seats which the Labour Party hold at the moment, which I, I very much think we are quite uh, well-placed to gain. Well, our poll sort of suggests that that might be true, but the biggest thing is that if you're really going to get a majority, you would have to have a pact with the Brexit Party, and that, to people like you, is an anathema. But I don't think that that's true, John. I think that if uh, we have left by October the 31st, then what is the point of the Brexit party? And also, you know, we've got a prime minister who led the campaign to leave, who is emphatic about leaving. It doesn't seem to me there's an awful lot of relevant political space there for the Brexit party. But nevertheless, this poll suggests, and there are others too that confirm it, that he's got a heck of a job to turn it round. The, the, the key issue is whether or not we are able to leave by the 31st of October. That is going well, you to don't believe that we will, do you? Uh, Let's be candid. I mean, you're a realist. No, I, I do believe. I think it's very important that we do honour our promise and leave by the 31st. But I am very keen indeed that the summit should deliver uh, a deal. And after all, this is the first time in your and my political life where politics is not defined by left, right, Labour, Tory principally. It is now by Remain Leave. Those are very deep definitions in Britain at the moment, which have split our country right down the middle. You've got two Remain parties, two Leave parties. But if we leave on the 31st, which I profoundly hope we will, and as I say... With a deal. With, with, a deal. A, with a deal. With a deal. Then it seems to me that the Brexit party's fox has been shot. That's Mrs May Mark IV. I mean, we just get another defeat. No, I think that uh, the deal that uh, Boris Johnson is clearly straining every sinew to achieve, 
uh, is one which will be better than the deal that was so heavily defeated in the House of Commons. Wouldn't and his strange sinew be better exercised actually in Europe going around trying to get a deal? I think there's an awful lot more going on behind the scenes than is generally recognised. And in EU negotiations, you have this business of texts that are draft and are not therefore tabled. I think, I think there is a plan. Uh, that's what Boris has said. And uh, I very much hope he will be successful. And you now think still that a general election is the answer to all your woes? Uh, I think that our legitimacy in the House of Commons is coming to an end. We need an election to clear the democratic air. We need a fresh mandate and the country needs to decide who is best to govern now.